regarding supplements, nutritional supplements, um, this is an area where a lot of us are confused. We've definitely hear certain supplements are thrown around a lot, like get vitamin D, get DHA, EPA, get vitamin C. What is your exact list for someone who says, I do not want Parkinson's or Alzheimer's. They're very scary. What is the exact list of supplements from one to 15 that you were saying, <laughs> your research is saying is the most important supplements that we should all be taking for the prevention of these two? Uh, may I? <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> uh, I would say that because 93% of Americans are below the bare minimum on vitamin E, that vitamin E is an excellent supplement to take. Unfortunately, uh, the vitamin E on the market is not real vitamin E at all. It's synthetic alpha tocopherol, a mixture of eight different elements that look like alpha tocopherol, but only one is real. The other seven are fake. So if you're talking about supplementing vitamin E, what we did in our trial was we had people eat an ounce of walnuts and an ounce of, for gamma tocopherol and an ounce of sunflower seeds for the alpha tocopherol. This is the real deal. We also found real vitamin E, which is very expensive and hard to find, virtually impossible in a supplement. But I do think vitamin E would be at the top of my list. Also vitamin C, which is also very important. And vitamin C, as you know, recharges vitamin E. Vitamin E will implant in a neuron and protect it. But once it's reduced one free radical, it needs vitamin C to recharge it so it can continue. So those two would be at the top of my list of supplements. Vitamin D is also very essential and, and low in many diets. And if you do get enough vitamin D, you're likely to get a lot of toxins along with it. So vitamin D would be an excellent D3 and uh, probably uh, 1,000 to 4,000 IUs a day, which is 25 to 100 micrograms in the more modern terminology. So those are a few. Uh, also zinc, manganese, selenium, and copper uh, are needed uh, in supplements every day. Again, with those trace minerals, you don't want too much and you don't want too little and you want the exact right form. Selenium should be selenomethione and so on. So you want the right form and the right amounts of those things. We actually produced, we had a lot of people in our trial and we had trial supplements, but people outside the trial couldn't get those. So we produced a brain and body food supplement that has most of the things in the trial, including everything I mentioned. We're actually able to get the real vitamin E at double the cost uh, in there. So as far as other supplements, um, coenzyme Q10 would be a nice one. It's difficult for our bodies to make it when we age. It's a crucial antioxidant. And you've mentioned the mitochondria several times. It is absolutely essential for the electron transport chain to function at all for aerobic energy production. It's named ubiquitone because it is found in every cell. But again, the form is important, ubiquinol or ubiquinone. You want ubiquinol. It's a better form of it. Uh, I could go on, but I, I don't want to talk too long. But anyway, there's my top five or 10 for you of supplements. Oh, vitamin B12 and folate. Don't forget those. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think we're all finding the same thing. Humans are complex organisms. You need to make the whole system work together. And so the idea that there is a list, everybody take these five or 10 or 15 or 20 supplements, really misses the whole point. We're trying to optimize the neurochemistry and the biochemistry for everybody. So for people who have high vitamin D levels that are out in the sun all the time and really don't need more vitamin D, they don't necessarily need to take it. For those of us you know, who are, having, who are low, um, we certainly may want to add it. So, and then of course, as we've heard many times, soils have changed, microbiomes are different. So it's gonna be a little bit different for each person. Now, having said that, there are some just as, and I would agree with many of the ones that Steve mentioned, um, I happen to like, uh, I happen to like omega-3s. I think how, how you get it, you know, if you can get it from fatty fish, that's fine. But certainly to work from Professor Workman from MIT would argue that a combination of DHA and citicoline is actually quite helpful for people um, and supports synaptic formation. Um, and then in general, and as Steve mentioned, you know, we're deficient. We're, most of us are deficient in zinc, about a billion people worldwide. M many people deficient in magnesium, many people deficient in iodine, many, many people deficient mm -hmm. in potassium. So these are relatively common things. Choline is another one. And of course, our omega-6 to omega-3 ratios, which should be much closer to, you know, three to one or something like this. Many of us are 15 to one, 20 to one. 
Uh, so we often do have too much of the pro-inflammatory omegas and too little of the anti-inflammatory omegas. So I do like some DHA and some EPA, and I do. I also like whole coffee fruit extract uh, because it is another way to help increase your BDNF. Um, and then I think you know there's a whole armamentarium um, that the Ayurvedic physicians have taught us about, and you know we should take advantage of those when you know when they're useful. Things like bacopa that can be can be quite helpful. Ashwagandha under the right circumstances. Shangpushpi, and there's a whole again. This is thousands of years old. Uh, literature showing that the, you know these that, that this can help cognition, so I, I think those are you know s some of my favorites. Um, that I, and again, for people who have plenty of those particular systems working, not so important. But for many of us who are deficient in the various things that Steve mentioned, absolutely, I think critical to get this optimized. Dr. Dorsey, any supplements that you've studied or feel want to add to the list? Uh, I'll defer to my uh, colleagues who have more expertise than I do. Studies in Parkinson's largely haven't been uh, terribly uh, exciting in terms of uh, finding good things to help people once they have the disease, but clearly we need more research and thinking about ways to prevent the disease from happening the first time.